we're, we're here at the People Centered Internet, and I'm talking to Sean Flynn, who's writer of the book Economics for Dummies, and he's basically sharing a couple of ideas with us how we can make the whole internet more internet centered. You came up with the first idea about um, Singapore. Singapore, you know, spends five percent of all of the gross national product on healthcare, and they do it right. What do they do better than us? Well, basically, they're the only country in the world that's embraced a combination of free markets and socialism in a way that empowers people. So control and spending control is pushed down to individual people, even though the whole say, social safety network gives them the money to spend. But you yeah. put the control into the We tried that in Holland so much. It fails so bitterly, and they work. Why is that? Why are they able to combine those incentives in an intelligent way that works? Well, because there's actually a free market. Holland still has too much government control over which specialties are done and which surgeries and who gets what. In, in Singapore, it's entirely up to individual consumers, which forces the doctors to actually compete to deliver high quality at low prices. So the, so the consumers are really aware of how much things cost? They care about how much a heart operation costs? Yes, they do. They shop around. You can, you, and, and it's all posted on the internet, the prices at every hospital, every clinic, and also quality metrics. You could, for instance, say this surgery might be better at uh, the expensive private hospital, but uh, it's a little cheaper at the public hospital, but and you can compare the complication rates, and then you can sort of make your own decision about quality versus quantity and trade-offs like that. Okay, so it is possible. It is possible in a regulated market to do private uh, incentives. Um, okay, the second thing you came up with was unintended consequences. You know, so yeah. that is also something which with the design of the internet we didn't think about uh, the consequences but what example did you come over there well the, the the problem is when you use the internet to try and impose development policies or try and make people richer and so one would be for instance our government here in the united states decided to print the calories of food items from restaurants on every menu in the country the idea being that they thought that we would then make better choices and get the low calorie items like the salad but unfortunately you know they were trying to combat obesity but then unfortunately it completely backfired because the poor especially ended up eating more calories because they could now compute which items had the most calories per dollar. And so <laughs> obesity has actually been increased by this policy. And so that's an unintended consequence. And so basically they should have run an experiment first, tried it in a few places and seen what would happen. But it was just assumed that they knew how people would behave. And that's a dangerous thing. You can't take people for granted. They have their own, they have their own ideas about what's best for their life rather yeah. than the policy. So test, A, B, A, B, testing, test, test, test until you blew in the face. Now another thing was really interesting, the submarine example. You know, a run a program which completely ran out of control and an uh, admiral came in for to build submarines and fixed one thing. That's right. So this was the last time America was trying to build a new class of nuclear submarines, very stealthy, compete with the Soviets. This was back in the 90s. We've upgraded them, but it's the same class. Massively over budget originally. Um, nothing was working. And they brought in an admiral who made one change, which was using off-the-shelf parts. Instead of trying to make every cu screw customized and every bolt and every nut and every toilet seat and also every computer chip, they just started using Intel inside and it saved the entire program under budget, on time, everything you'd possibly want. But if I look at now the new uh, firefighter they're now making, it's completely again uh, over budget and a, p and, a horrible, and a horrible example of how not to run a project. Yes. So but they don't learn from that successful project. No, but the, the young officers, I know young naval officers, they've all been told this story. But that doesn't mean that anyone's actually going to implement it very sadly. So l knowledge gets lost all the time. It's very sad. But, you know, if we did what that admiral did on every um, program, we wouldn't be talking about the submarine. It wouldn't have been an outlier. Yeah. You know, the one, one level higher. I mean, you're talking, you're, you're an economics uh, guy. You wrote books about it, very successful. But I mean, you're talking about the irrationality of, of, of humans, or you're talking about that it's very difficult to discover the rationality of humans in their behavior. Well, I think the best way to look at it is that there's a human nature that's different from a monkey nature, that's different from the nature that Hume or Adam Smith or any philosopher assumes about us, yep. and that we have to take people as they are. And whether it's irrational or not, a policy won't work unless it works with the people and their tendencies and their beliefs. Those, of course, can change over time for things like gay marriage and whatnot. But if people, you know, have a tendency for, you know, I'll give you something called... Uh, there's a budgeting phenomenon where people think of their budget in little categories. And so recently it's been discovered that when the ga price of gasoline falls in America, you know, say it falls 20%, yeah. people's expenditures only fall maybe 8%. And the reason is, with gasoline cheaper, they buy more expensive gasoline. 
because they have a gasoline budget in their head and just because the gasoline is cheaper they still want to spend the same amount of money rather than reallocating it anywhere else and yeah. this is a human tendency and so the government if they want people to spend more money on other things you have to do something more than just lower the price of gasoline and this just needs they're going to have to be intelligent about changing the policy okay so now if we design the next version of the internet well suppose we could do that mm -hmm. and then uh, the people in this room certainly have great credentials for it based on your economic experiences what should we do what should we build into this internet should we have an incentivized system should we have a more intelligent humor mo model what should we change on the internet I would like to introduce more of the idea that things should be paid for. For instance, if everyone had to send a penny along with an email, you'd end all spamming because no one could afford to send a million emails at a penny apiece, right? And of course, the pennies could accrue in my account and then I could use them to send some other emails later. But I think the idea that everything is free is very dangerous. Because, you know, of course, the Internet has to be paid for. And the way it's being paid for right now is everyone collects our data silently behind the scenes and then uses it to try and wait, you know, to exploit us. You know, giving me movie recommendations or real estate recommendations or home mortgage recommendations. And so if everyone actually was paying for the Internet like a subscriber just a little bit, the entire economics of the entire system would change in ways that weren't so much based on stealthy collection of knowledge and information the end purpose of which we cannot predict at this point. Okay, so Internet for Dummies, or econo Economics for Dummies says, we should design the next version of the Internet and have payments included in it, deep into the system, and that would improve it for people, you think? Yes, because nothing's actually free, and people don't seem to understand that. And, uh, and if, you're, if you think you're receiving something for free, yeah. you're actually the product. Okay. Vint, get us a wallet on the internet, by default. Thank you. <laughs>